Today we are cutting a certified Hereford ribeye. A lot of people have heard about Angus. Angus has a great marketing program. Those farmers have done a great job. Angus is those big old black cows that are out there in the field, generally speaking. And Hereford, generally speaking, are the big red and white cows that you'll see out there on the farm. With all ribeyes, we are looking for about an 85% yield. I have already pre-weighed this one out. I didn't want to bother you with that whole process, but this is what we call a 13 down, meaning that it is under 13 pounds. Why that means that you'll get a thicker steak if you do a 13 and up. Like if you're doing prime rib, that means you'll get a nice thinner steak and that'll cover up more of the plate coverage. I like the downs because I like a nice thick cut steak. So this is a 12.8 pounds, so just under the 13 threshold. There is quite a bit of fat that is on this steak. Looking to the flip side up on the bottom, we do have some of the, some people call it finger meat, some people call it the rib meat. But we are going to butcher that out though and just kind of make it just a little bit cleaner on the underside. All of this affects our overall yield. The yield is literally everything. We're uh, talking about our yield, that 12.8 pounds, it includes all of this fat. It includes the you know, the, the, the blood, the liquid, and everything that's there inside of the package, and it includes the plastic technically. So let's take a look at that chain, and we're just going to cut right through here. We're going to leave about one inch all the way across, and basically we're going to kind of do a general first cut. I'm kind of wanting to eliminate it. This chain is kind of on the large side, so I'm going to do my first cut all the way across, Nice and easy, nice and easy. Kind of feeling around. Then I'm going to come in and make a secondary cut here. There's going to be some more trimming as we go along when we get to cutting the individual steaks. We'll take a look at each one. This steak is a little bit more fatty, but it has a lot to do with this uh, the season that we're in. It is in the middle of summer. Cows, generally speaking, are a little bit fattier this time of year than in winter when they're not getting uh, all of the grass and the grains and the big diets. They're they're kind of a little bit more, um, they're getting a little bit more uh, grass time. So first thing we're going to do, our first cut, that is to uh, flatten out our ribeye. I like to call that the steak cut, specials cut. That can go to a lot of different things. Put it over off to the side. And then we're going to start making our first cut. So we're going for 12 ounces. So all of these I'm hitting. So I have about a 0.4 variance on either side. So it could be an 11.6. It could be a 12.4. Uh, either way, I am uh, I'm kind of within that threshold on all of these. That first one just would be weird. It would cook at an odd temperature because one side is thin. One side is large. So that would uh, kind of create an, an uneven cooking. So I don't like to use those. Again, I can grind it up into chili. I can make some meat skewers that can go sell on a salad. I don't typically use that for anything. Or I can just bring it in as a, a chef special, give myself a little, little some yum yums for my belly, and uh, you know just enjoy my afternoon. There's nothing better than a, a good little chef's cut. Again, look at how rich and marbling that is. Just fantastic marbling on these Herefords. And Herefords are very different than Angus and how they develop flavor. Uh, it's very, very rich. It's almost like having au jus built into the steak itself. It's very different than an Angus. And Angus has a lot lighter of a beef flavor versus Hereford that is very rich. And that's because they have different eating patterns. Angus, they're very heavy at the trough. Where Herefords, typically speaking, are a lot more relaxed. They're not going to bum rush that. Um, they're not going to bum rush that trough. They're going to do a little bit more grass feeding. So did a little bit more trimming there, kind of getting down into that last bit again. I'm doing about 0.75 inch to one inch all the way down, and you kind of using my knuckles as that guiding point. Always be careful with your fingertips when you're kind of getting down there on the end. It is always super easy to kind of cut your finger. So this last bit is because I'm recognizing that it's basically two 12 ounces. So I split her right down the middle. They ended up weighing uh, 11, uh, 11, 8, and one of them was 12, 4. So both of them are within the parameter. 
Those end pieces are some of my favorite. That's probably my favorite cut on the steak. It is a little bit more misshapen uh, on this particular ribeye, but I could use a string or something there on the end to uh, to kind of help formulate that circle and to make it more consistent in the cook. So that's not a big deal. That's two extra minutes to tie those up. And look at those beautiful ribeyes. Ribeyes uh, from the Hereford are just, they're very rich. They're very delicious. Uh, these are from Greater Omaha is the, the company that they come from. Uh, I've worked with their steaks before. They got a couple different variants that they have. Uh, one includes an 1881, and that is a 51% Hereford, 49% Angus. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. Uh, I kind of like that. It's one of my favorite steaks out there. And then, again, we'll kind of take a look over here. I kind of sat that other steak off to the side and... You're worrying about, you know, what could be happening with all of these different sides. These sides do not go to waste. They will be ground down and used. This fat is actually kind of reminds me of leaf fat. It's it's very like it's, uh, it's dissolving in my hands. It's breaking apart. So I plan on using this for some biscuits. Uh, I'll also often grind up the fat and I can use that in for sausage making or I like to grind it up and put it into my smoker and then I've got uh, smoked fat that I can add onto my briskets. Hope you guys enjoy. This is Kitchen Boot Camp and we'll see you next time.